Good morning, everyone. Um, down here to make some orange vanilla cream, goat milk, and honey soap. So we're gonna get started. Enjoy the show. Bye. So when we do our soap, we like to use um, the lye, and we start it off in a little bit of water because it helps it to. Um, not scorch the goat milk so much. So this is frozen uh, raw goat milk <coughs> that we use in our soap. And um, over here are the oil mixture that we use. And um, in that oil, oil mix mixture, there's palm kernel, there's <coughs> coconut oil, there's palm oil, castor oil, <coughs> avocado oil, olive oil, shea butter, cocoa butter, and the uh, tallow. So we want to make sure that we temp the um, lye and the oils correctly to help us keep from burning our soaps. So some of this um, is a little bit of a top secret recipe because I don't think everybody knows how to do it. But uh, So over here is honey. This is raw honey and we source that from the family cow. The raw goat's milk that he now poured the lye water onto also is sourced from the family cow. It's Caprine Delight raw goat's milk. It's good stuff. No junk in there. Um, and then we've got here is our scent. That's what we'll be making it smell nice with. Um, then this is orange peel powder. It's a nice natural. So we like to make this soap, we'd like to make it a nice creamy and a real pretty orange, which when we make it here today, you'll see the colors are nice. They look really, really good. But then whenever it cures over time, the lye does cook the milk and the fats and the sugars in the milk. So it's the sugars that will scorch a little bit and that's gonna turn our nice orange color that we intended it to be in a more of a brown but it is the uh, orange peel powder this is actually some um, orange mica it's a natural uh, Michael also to try and help us get a more orange otherwise the orange peel powder doesn't really do a whole whole lot but um, it, it gives it some nice texture though too um, and then we use a little bit of this stuff to, to just mesh it all together. So I'm going to be quiet now. You can watch the process as my husband makes it. As you can see that lye, it works fast. It gets really, really hot. A lot of people have wondered about lye and um, how it's maybe not good to use in soap because it's lye, it's caustic, whatever. But you know what, lye, they use that to um, the first initial boiling of bagels. They use it in making pretzels. So lye is not something that is not able to be used by the body in the correct ways as in it's not toxic to you now if you took a spoonful of lye and stuck it in your mouth yeah you you'd be probably seriously burning yourself and hurting yourself but we have to have the lye for the saponification of the oils it's what makes this the oils turn into soap so it cooks them it makes them gel together and and works real well for that. Um, it's weird it's if you, it's weird that whenever you uh, have 
um, oils together, you wouldn't think that it would make soap, but um, that's part of what what makes it be able to suds is the fact that the lye is in there. Once the whole soap making process is done, we let it cure four to six weeks because that is when the lye will neutralize and you won't have any problems from it. So there won't be any heat left from it. There's no issues. It just does its job in cooking the, the soap and letting it gel and saponify. So that's that whole process. But the lye is gone before the bars ever get to you. That's the whole point in curing it. The longer you let the uh, soap cure, the harder bar you will get. Go ahead. As you see, he's using a, a blender to really mix the oils and the lye goat milk solution together. And this is what helps to get the um, mixture to start the saponification method or the um, process in there. It's going to thicken the whole thing up. As you can see, as he's going through, it's getting thicker and thicker. And from this point out, it's going to continue to, to get thick. So we don't want to take it too far because then we won't be able to pour it into our soap molds. And we need that to be able to be pourable. And we're going to separate the colors here out of the main batch. It's getting nice and creamy. If you notice, the micas really do help um, a little more than the uh, things like the orange peel powder. You can see how that's turning that a nicer orange. This was the orange peel powder and that's the orange mica, so you can tell the difference. So the honey, honey really heats this up. The lye with the honey make this go really hot. So it's going to cook it a lot faster and it's going to make it um, get thick. So we make sure we get it in every color and every layer. try and move this over so you can see the the molds there you go this is one of the reasons my husband makes it because it's such a big heavy thing last time I tried to do it I ended up spilling it all over the table <laughs> so he told me no <laughs> so 
So as long as it stays nice and liquid like this, you can just drop it down in and the colors will mix. Now, the last orange cream we did uh, was layers. It was, it was okay. We were hoping the color was gonna stay better, but it didn't stay as nice as we liked it to. So we're trying to get more color to it with the orange mica and we're trying to uh, just get it a prettier design. So a lot of this is just trial and error whenever we do designs. When we find something that we think really works well, then we'll try to keep that design. And uh, But every single loaf is going to come out different because we just can't do everything factory made. This is a uh, artisan soap. We have to wear gloves because like I said that lye is in there and it would burn our skin. So you have to be really careful. How many pounds of soap is this? 10 pounds. So this is 10 pounds of soap. All together. It looks really pretty going in. I love the different colors. But when we cut it, it'll it'll look pretty good too. But then it'll change over the course of four to six weeks of curing. And we'll just have to see what happens then. Hopefully it'll be nice like this. Everything we use is uh, natural. There shouldn't be any issues with skin sensitivity unless if you actually have an issue with a certain oil, if you're allergic to avocados or you're allergic to coconut or something like that or shea butter, there's nothing in here chemical wise to cause a reaction in your body that would be negative. And this is how we do it. This uh, smells, it smells like a dreamsicle pop. So this is the orange vanilla cream. If you want something that smells like a dreamsicle in your shower or at your kitchen sink or bathroom sink or laundry or wherever, this is a nice scent. Very nice aroma. Now the recipe for our oil mixture, my husband and I came up with that together. I came up with the original recipe at work, he tweaked it a little more. Um, and that's how you get your bubbles, is the combination of oils and butters that you use. If you get too much butter, then you'll get too uh, slimy of a bar. If you get too much of certain oils, you'll get a hard bar that's going to crack. If you get... Um, other things can make it really, really sudsy, but it'll never get hard enough for you. So it's kind of a trial and error thing to figure out what your recipe is going to be. It definitely is uh, interesting, the different loaves you come out with. And uh, once you find the perfect recipe, you really don't want to mess with it too much. But we started adding tallow to our soaps and some of our other skin things because tallow is just so uh, moisturizing and it's kind of a bio-identical 
um, to your to your own skin, so it blends in very very well, and it'll give great moisturization. And like I've said in many many posts, the honey, the added benefit, like goat milk soap, is wonderful on its own. It's just it's great because it pH balances your skin. It's moisturizing. It'll help alleviate dry, itchy skin. It'll, um, it's a nice thing, but that honey, the added benefit of honey is such a good humectant and just draws the moisture in. It's just like an added extra bit of uh, pampering for your skin. So that's, it's, it can be a pain to work with sometimes, but overall, it's a really nice addition to each bar. We also uh, make sure that we have the um, raw organic honey. Well, I guess they don't call it organic, they call it raw holistic honey because it's next to impossible to actually have organic honey because you don't know whose farm the bees went to. But we know that the family cow gives us good raw honey um, and we want to use that because so much of the honey in the marketplace has been adulterated with high fructose corn syrup. And they actually ship the honey over to China so they can um, mix it in there that even beekeepers and people can't tell what's the adulterated stuff and what's the real deal stuff. So we want to go with a good source, like the family cow, because we know them, we trust them. We know their commitment to quality, and um, they're a, a local business. They're on the eastern side of the state, but it's still us still supporting our fellow local small business. And they work hard at, at what they do to give us the best they can. And uh, they have excellent, excellent meats and milks and cheeses and uh, honey. There's maple syrup. They have seasonal vegetables. They have fermented foods. They sell our soap. It's a nice partnership. You see how thick that got? In the beginning it was pretty soupy. Now it's getting so thick it's getting harder to pour. We want it that way for the top so that we can make our Lauren Mountain Soaps Mountain Peaks. Comes up out of the mold. We don't want it running over the edges. Once we do get this one done, this is going to have to sit for a day in the mold till it saponifies enough to be hard enough to keep its shape when we take out of the mold. And then that's when we'll cut it and then we'll put it on the racks to cure for the four to six weeks. And we've got a, a several batches we're going to be making here. This is the orange vanilla cream, then we'll have a jewelweed soap. Jewelweed soap, uh, excellent for this time of year, especially if you're going to be outdoors, getting into possible poison ivy, oak, or sumac. You come in, take a shower with the jewelweed soap, and that will help remove the urushol from the poison ivy, oak, or sumac off of your skin. It's also um, soothing sometimes people that have 
different kind of rashes, the jewelweed will help with other kind of dermatitis too. But we have, we try to make a soap that kind of will hit everybody's needs. This one is more of a decorative, nicely scented soap. Very nourishing and moisturizing. So that is a full recipe for 10 pounds of soap. This is your orange vanilla cream. I'll show you a cutting video after it cures. I'll do a video of that and put it up so you can see how the creation turned out. But we're going to have to wait to uh, sculpt the peaks on this because it's still a little bit too soupy for us to do it. But I just wanted you to start seeing some of our process here. It is a fun thing, but it's something where we can do some of these together and Kind of looks like caramel drizzle. A lot of people have been posting, boy, that looks like fudge. Yeah, it does look like fudge, but it doesn't taste like fudge. You have really clean teeth if you eat it, though. But I think our uh, thoughts on this was orange vanilla cream. Definitely went the creamy white for the representing the goat's milk. And then you've got the nicer um, reddish orange. It's kind of our thought, you know, blood oranges. And then the other oranges are the regular navel orange. It's just a nice mixture. It smells wonderful. It's good enough to eat. Like a party. Thank you for joining us. We're going to clean up and like I said, uh, I'll videotape when we cut this and so you get to see what it looks like and then we'll see you then. Have a great one. Bye.